separated and look at its form and substance as earth and creation, or as it in its inhabitants in all our diversity. Most often, all of it is combined unless we are talking about something specific. The world is creation, of which we are a part. Human beings add an extra layer of complexities, joys, and concerns to all that is the world. John's Gospel often refers to the world, and today we explore some of those themes. We begin with a call to worship. Jesus promised to be with us always. We are thankful for that promise. In all times, this promise gives us hope. We rejoice in the hope Jesus gives us. Come and celebrate the eternal promises of Christ. We are so grateful that Jesus has given us so much and that we are promised God's presence with us always. As we come into this time of worship, we ask that God may open our eyes, our ears, and consequently our minds to praise, promise, and teaching. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes. and confession. God of promise and purpose, we greet you this day with thankful hearts. As flowers open and buds unfurl around us, the beauty of your world lifts our hearts in praise. As children grow and students prepare to graduate, their energy and enthusiasm encourages us toward your future. You lifted up Jesus to be by your side, and so we know he is always by your side as the future opens before us. Draw close to us in this time of worship and show us the promise and purpose in our own lives, how we can unfurl with new life and move into the future with the energy of your Holy Spirit and the abiding love of Christ our Lord. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you have called all your followers to carry the good news of God's love and forgiveness to the ends of the earth. Yet we confess we cannot always find the words to tell others of our faith. We are often silent when others criticize the church that bears your name. We try to act out your love, but it's hard to tell others why we do what we do for you. Forgive our hesitation to share the gift you have given us and renew our courage to speak of our commitment to you. By the power of your Holy Spirit, open our minds and hearts to receive your word, O oh God, so that we may recognize your call to serve in the name of Jesus Christ, the living word. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. You are a beloved and forgiven child of God. Live in that forgiveness and love one another. Scripture holds words to help guide us in our living out our lives. We turn now to a reading from the Gospel of John. The scripture reading is from John 17, 6 to 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. They have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the things that many who have means have missed in these past 14 months or so, is being able to escape the day-to-day -day realities and head off on a trip. Whether it is to be the, to the woods, to the big city, camp, or another country. Even small moments that take us away from our world, in other words, the daily grind, the challenges and the struggles, like going out for a coffee with a friend, well, these activities have been halted. There have been moments of reprieve, but nothing lasting. Thankfully, it looks like with time and vaccinations, things will allow us at least some of those opportunities. The point is that we like to get away from it all. 
I say this knowing that many people who are marginalized never get a reprieve, never get to experience getting away from it all. That takes time and money, and there are many who, for various reasons, just never get that kind of security. The scripture reading today talks about being part of the world and being sent into the world. The reading is actually the middle section of a prayer that Jesus was recorded uh, as saying when he and his disciples, disciples shared a final time together before Jesus headed out and was betrayed by Judas in the garden. This prayer is for Jesus' disciples. The first part of the prayer, verses 1 through 5, are Jesus addressing God as the Son, as God's Son. This section that we listen to today, verses 6 through 19, well, this is for the disciples. And the last section, verses 20 to 26, is a prayer for those who have, have yet to believe. It is significant that Jesus had prayed for us even before we yet existed. Still, this part of the prayer that is our focus today is that of Jesus praying for those who had believed and followed. By extension, as those who believe and follow today, we too can take away much from this part of Jesus' prayer. One of the things Jesus says here is, as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. Now, unlike us heading off to enjoy a sunrise or a sunset in another part of the world and getting away from it all, Jesus is actually sending us into the thick of things, which is interesting considering, especially considering, that in this section of John, the world might be seen as the least likely place for someone who believes in Jesus and has faith in God, especially a world that hated them because they do not belong to the world. The world in this part of the gospel is a place of brokenness and pain, of structures and systems that want power and control. This is not to be confused with creation. God created the world and God so loved the world that he sent his only son, Jesus. And remembering this is key when you read this part of John. God has always, will always, love the creation. God will always love us and every human being that walks the face of the earth. There is no caveats here. For God so loved the world. But there is the recognition and understanding, really the knowledge, that the world is a place where harm, illness, and suffering exists. It is a place where God and those who live as people of faith will not be welcomed. We don't see it as much in Canada and places where the church has a long history of Christian community that has been accepted. But even here, we are no longer mainstream, and many find it difficult to openly say, I am a Christian, for fear of eye-rolling or conversations that we often don't feel equipped to address. In other parts of the world, to be a Christian is downright dangerous and life-threatening. For the followers of Jesus, in his time, things were dangerous. The New Testament is filled with stories of persecution and peril. These stories can also be found in ancient histories and letters by politicians. So when Jesus asked for God to protect those who God had given Jesus so that they may be one, it was in the full knowledge that when they were sent to teach others about Jesus, they were headed for dangerous territory. Things were so hazardous that Jesus was the target of those in power who worried about his influence and his incredible ability to lead others. I want to go back for a moment to the first part of this reading to point out how much giving is going on here, or is happening here. Jesus says to God in prayer, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. 
they were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave me, I have given to them. There are many who, when they envision who God is, see an old bearded man seated in judgment of people. Yet passages such as this point to the generous nature of God as a giver of life, of protection, of relationship. Even if we go back to the key verse in the Gospel of John 3.16, we hear the words, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in Jesus may not perish but have eternal life. God is loving and generous. Yes, there are many stories of judgment, particularly in the Old Testament, as people turned from God. But this is a, as much a reality of the consequences of people walking away from the relationship God desires as it is about God's judgment. When we turn away from God, we turn our backs on recognizing God's love and compassion we turn away from God's protection and joy. Please note that this does not mean we are spared struggle and grief, brokenness and harm. If that were the case, Jesus would not have had to pray for our protection. Once we choose to be followers of Jesus, our struggle begins simply because we start to see the world through the lens of compassion, relationship and reconciliation. Now, the context of John's writing may also be helpful to us. Remember, the Gospels were written a number of years after Jesus' death. We tend to read them in real time, but that is not the context from which the Gospels came. In the case of the Gospel of John, there is strong evidence that the people who were gathering as a community of faith still considered themselves part of the Jewish faith, but their belief in Jesus found them being cast out of that community. We also forget that followers were not looking to leave their synagogues. They simply believed that Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah of the Jewish people, had shown up. For that, they suffered persecution among their own people, along with the threat of political scapegoating. The writer of the Gospel chose this prayer of Jesus to give much-needed courage, strength, and hope to those who were still living in the world and being sent into the world. As pastor and teacher David Lose writes, nothing in or of the world can ultimately withstand the grace and mercy of God's gift of love. Nothing in or of the world can ultimately withstand the grace and mercy of God's gift of love. And this is where we land. We are not of this world in the sense that we are in relationship with God and believe in the one who was sent in God's name, Jesus. The world still needs people who will show in word and deed that ultimately nothing in or of the world can stand withstand the grace and mercy of God's gift of love. We are the image bearers of God. Saint and sinner rolled into one because we are not perfect. Set apart, sanctified if you will, as people who have been given words from Jesus, receive them and know in truth that Jesus came from God and believe that God sent Jesus for the sake of the world. In any case, People will experience God through us. Will it be a version of a God who judges that uh, so many people already think is the God of our faith? Or will they experience the generous, loving God who gives and gives and gives because God so loved the world? As Jesus was sent into the world, Jesus has sent us into the world. Go and be image bearers of God. The image bearers that embody the love of God 
for the world this day and every day. This day and every day that you have breath. Amen. Through our prayers, we are given the opportunity to care for the world. Let us pray. O oh God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all life, you have begun the work of creating a new world, a world where justice is known, where freedom and healing are available to all people. We pray for the places in the world that are caught up in violence, where people are held captive or struggle under oppressive powers, and where sickness prevails and medical resources are scarce. Grant those affected courage and perseverance through your spirit. May people everywhere find the fullness of life you intend for us all. You have begun the work of creating a new community, a community where love is shared and all find a sense of belonging. We pray for groups who are made to feel like they don't belong, for families that, caught up, that are caught up in tension or strife, and for those who feel isolated or desperate because no one seems to care. Grant them all courage and comfort through your spirit. May people everywhere find the fullness of life you intend for us all. You have begun the work of making a new creation, a creation where all that has been broken is restored, where all that has been distorted is made right and what has been polluted or damaged is renewed. We pray for the earth, the places where its natural balances are threatened and species put at risk by human exploitation. Send your Holy Spirit to renew the earth and make us wiser stewards. May creatures everywhere know the fullness of the life you intend for us all. As you work toward making all things new, we pray for renewal in our churches and ministries, for leaders tired out by the responsibilities of coping with pandemic demands, and for church members who have drifted away in the months of distancing. Send your energizing spirit to gather the church in ways both familiar and new. May your servants in every church know the fullness of life you intend for us all and be empowered to bear witness to Jesus in refreshing ways. For together we offer the prayer he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Easter season comes to a close with this Ascension Sunday. Yet we will continue to receive the blessings of God pour that God pours out for us in Christ and in creation. For God is good to us. Our gifts to God tell of our gratitude for those blessings and our commitment to share them with the whole world. There are people from different churches and places following this service. I encourage each of you to present your offering to God this day to your church community. If you consider St. Andrews your church, regardless of where you live, would like to learn more about St. Andrews or get involved in our ministry and work, or make a donation towards our life and our ministry, uh, please visit our website at St. Andrews T Bay or St. Andrews Prez T Bay .ca for more information. One thing that is sure and is attested to through every page of our scriptures is that God is faithful. As we hear the hymn, may you hear, become aware of God's faithfulness to the world and to you. Great is God's faithfulness. Oh, uh -huh.
with you. Go to serve God by taking care of each other and God's world. Go now in peace.